Hey guys, I'm Aero Veloce, and if you're anything like me, you like to use your PC for more than just sim racing. It becomes a challenge if you have a multi-monitor or single monitor desk setup, a triple monitor sim rig, or just however many monitors you might have there. And then if you throw VR in the mix, that's just another device, and it's very limiting to use one PC for all of these devices. There's too many devices for one graphics card to handle, and sometimes you might run into issues with certain bandwidths on certain ports, being able to fully display what your monitor might be capable of. Manually having to unplug a device to plug another one in every time you want to use one or the other is not good for the life of the ports in your graphics card. You can damage them over time, as well as any barrier to entry of trying to do what you're trying to do just means you're less likely to do it. So I've seen some people resort to using their sim rig as their desk or compromising of what they want to do, like maybe just using a single ultra wide, even though they really want to do triple monitors or compromising their desk, um, not using, you know, as much as they'd like to util fully utilize their desk either. And for me, those options are just either uncomfortable or just something I'm not willing to compromise on. If I'm playing a game at my desk, I want to be able to have the full experience. I don't want to compromise on any of the features of my gaming monitor. And the same goes for my sim rig as well. You don't want to sacrifice the performance or the experience of things you spent hard-earned money on. So we want our cake and we want to eat it too. But how can we utilize all these devices on only a couple limited ports on one PC? Well, I'll show you how I've done this with my setup and how you can apply it to yours. So buckle up, things are gonna get pretty tech heavy. In order to switch from my desktop setup to my sim racing setup, all I have to do is lean over here, feel for the button, click, and just wait a couple seconds and these will pop on. There we go. So I have a 3090 Founders GPU. So I have three DisplayPort 1.4 ports and one HDMI 2.1 port. I'm running three 4K 120Hz G-Sync monitors at my Simrig setup and an ultra-wide 144Hz monitor with G-Sync as well at my desk. And I also have a Valve Index VR headset. Now these are all very high bandwidth using devices because they're such high resolution and high refresh rate devices. And with monitors like these, you can't just use any ordinary switch because you'll lose out on either refresh rate, G-Sync, or even other features. That's why the very specific switch I'm using is a DisplayPort 1.4 bi-directional switch, and it's not manipulating the signal at all. It's basically just changing the lane of which monitor it's going out to. So that way we can still run things like G-Sync, we still get the full bandwidth of DisplayPort 1.4, and uh, we don't compromise on anything. Now, because we're using such high bandwidth devices, the cables that we use are important. Now, the things we do have to think about is the distance that we're traveling. Because we're using a cable going from the switch to the PC and another cable going to each monitor, the distance of the overall length of the cables can't go too far. Otherwise, you'll have flickering issues or artifacts or anything like that. So you just got to keep your runs as close as you possibly can. I wouldn't recommend going like a 10-foot cable and another 10-foot cable. Um, that's probably gonna cause you some issues there. You know, six feet and six feet will probably be okay. It's also gonna depend on what your monitor is. My 4K 120 hertz monitors basically had no issues with, you know, what cables I used with them, but my ultra wide and I used to run a 1440p 240 hertz monitor as well, were definitely a lot more finicky on which cables they liked and how long the distance I could go with the cables was. Now, another thing that could possibly cause you flickering issues is if you're running an overclock on your monitor. So this monitor is a 144 hertz monitor, but I could actually overclock it to about 175 hertz. And normally that's okay if I'm just running a straight cable to the PC, no, no issues like that. But as soon as I put the switch in the mix, very rarely would I get a short black flickering and that could be very annoying. So I just took the overclock off and ever since I did that, it doesn't seem like I have any more issues. And if you're using lower refresh rate monitors, you're less likely to have issues. So you might be able to extend the lengths of your cables if you have to a little bit more, but that's just always something to think about. And if you run into issues, you know where to, where to tackle first. Now I used to run two of these with two monitors at my desk, but I downsized to one just because I like how clean it is now. But you could potentially run three and have three desk monitors and three monitors at your sim rig or you know whatever configuration you would like. It gives you a lot of uh, you know more room to play with. So with that, you shouldn't have to compromise whatever your desktop setup is to have your dream sim rig setup as well. And the other good thing is these things are only like twenty something bucks on Amazon. So if they don't work out, it's easy return. And uh, you know, it's not gonna cost you a ton of money to, to run this setup in the first place too.
Now, in order to have everything work seamlessly with just a click of the button, I set my appropriate primary screen settings and frame rates, and then I deactivate any monitors I don't want to use that are currently hooked up. Then I flip the button on the switch to do exactly the same thing on my sim rig. So basically, Windows remembers these settings, so anytime I press the button, it's disconnecting whatever monitors I only want to use at each station. So that's it, problem solved, right? I can use three monitors at my desk, three at my sim rig, and I even have an HDMI spot free. Well, in my case, unfortunately, the Valve Index uses another display port, and I can't use the switch because any type of signal extending on the Valve Index is just a no-go. You will have artifacts and, and issues with that, so I have to use a direct connection to the graphics card. And with a direct connection to the graphics card, that means one of my triple screen setups at my sim rig is now no longer connected. Now this is where the nifty HDMI 2.1 port comes in. If I only had an HDMI 2.0 port, I wouldn't be able to run this monitor at 4K 120 Hertz, and I would have to downgrade it to 60 Hertz, which means I would have to downgrade all three of the monitors to 60 Hertz, and I won't just be getting what I paid for anymore. In today's market, there's very few monitors that support HDMI 2.1, but these Aorus monitors thankfully do. That allows me to free up the display port for my VR headset, and it allows me to run my third monitor at the same full bandwidth as the other ones. Now there is one caveat that may or may not affect you and your specific scenario. By running one of these monitors on HDMI 2.1 instead of all three on DisplayPort, I no longer have full access to NVIDIA Surround. There's a very small difference in frequencies when running HDMI versus DisplayPort on these monitors, and NVIDIA Surround needs them all to be matching in order for it to work. This was a trade-off I was willing to make because I didn't really use NVIDIA Surround that much in the first place, but for you it might be a different story. In most cases, I use an application called Simple Runtime Window Editor to get my racing games spanned on all three screens. I know that may be a mouthful, but it's definitely something to think about for your own setup or if you're planning on building a feature setup and want to make sure you have those features. Here's a diagram of how I have my monitor set up. One of the sim racing monitors is going directly into the GPU through DisplayPort. Another one is going through the DisplayPort switch with my desktop monitor also going through that DisplayPort switch. The last sim racing monitor is using the HDMI 2.1 port, and then the VR headset is going to the last available DisplayPort. There it is. I can now switch between my desk setup to my sim racing setup to VR all within a click of a button. Getting rid of all the hassle so I can do what I want, when I want, without a ton of preparation work. If this video left you with more questions than answers, then feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll help you as best as I can. I hope this video helps you out getting your setup more optimized and working perfectly for you. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more sim racing and just tech related content. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Break my mind. So open up this mind.